Since 2012, Joslin Art Museum and Omaha Symphony have together presented Symphony Joslin, a popular series of concerts and gallery talks pairing music and art in surprising ways. Hello, this is Taylor Acosta, Joslin's Associate Curator of European Art. And in lieu of this month's live musical performance and conversation in the gallery, I'm happy to share this virtual gallery talk on the death of Socrates, painted in 1788 by Jean-Francois Pierre Peyron. And I invite you to listen to recorded excerpts from Franz Josef Haydn's Symphony No. 22. Haydn's Symphony No. 22 has been called The Philosopher, a title thought to derive from the melody and counterpoint of the first movement, which intimates the dialogic of a medieval disputation. The chorale between the horns and the choranglace is set against a gentle tick-tock of strings that evokes the image of a pensive philosopher. A fitting complement to this classical symphony is Peyron's The Death of Socrates. With clarity and sensitivity, the painting depicts the great philosopher's moment of heroic self-sacrifice. It is an outstanding example of neoclassicism, realizing the ideals of antique beauty, civic virtue, and intellectual rigor. It is difficult to mention the name of Jean-Francois Pierre Peyron without immediately invoking that of Jacques-Louis David. This comparison is almost always to the detriment of Peyron, and perhaps explains why his work is not more widely recognized. What would have been Peyron's place without David? It is of course impossible to rewrite history, but I would like to offer a biographical sketch and some history of the painting in Joslin's collection. Born in Aix-en-Provence in 1744 and trained in Paris, Peyron won the Academy's grand prize for painting in 1773. Two years later, he left for Rome, where he remained until 1782. This was a long and very productive visit for an artist who was in poor health and who painted slowly and often with great difficulty. Still, Peyron showed tremendous promise. During his first Roman years, he was widely regarded as the one who might reinvigorate the French school. He was among the first painters to reapply the classical principles of composition when the prevailing fashion was in favor of the decorative Rococo style. But upon his return to Paris, he soon found himself eclipsed by the younger David. Peyron painted this version of the death of Socrates in 1788 and first showed it in 1790. One art critic offered the following appraisal. Monsieur Peyron has treated this subject several times but never with greater success than in the easel painting that he presents to us today. It has more unity, more harmony, more color than his previous versions, and the historical narrative is rendered perfectly by the expressions and gestures of the figures. This canvas is actually a revision of an oil sketch that Peyron exhibited at the Salon of 1787, where it was overshadowed by the great success of David's treatment of the same subject. Indeed, Comparison of the interpretations of the death of Socrates by Peyron and David marked a critical point in the artist's rivalry and in the history of French neoclassical painting. Based on Plato's Phaedo, the theme of the death of the ancient Athenian philosopher Socrates became fashionable in France in the mid-18th century. The critic and philosopher Denis Diderot, in his Discourse on Dramatic Poetry published in 1758, advised artists to consider the story for elaboration with all its intellectual and emotional gravitas, and it became a favored subject for painters working in the neoclassical style. Adapting classical and Renaissance conceptions of order and clarity to depict models of virtue from ancient history, neoclassicists valorized the didactic and moral potential of art. Peyron was a great admirer of antique beauty with an aptitude for narrative exposition. He may have considered painting a death of Socrates as early as 1780 at the suggestion of the director of the Royal Collection, who exerted considerable influence on government sponsorship of the arts. Peyron committed himself to the subject in 1786 when he secured a commission from King Louis XVI for a large tableau. David also decided to paint Death of Socrates for the Salon of 1787. That painting is now in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Formal differences with respect to light, color, and space distinguished the works. Peyron's dramatic composition emphasized the emotional aspects of the scene, while David's more schematic approach privileged apprehension. As one astute critic summarized, Peyron's painting is the work of a profound philosopher, and David's painting is the work of a great logician. 
but most salon reviewers found David's interpretation to be more powerful. While the artists were near contemporaries who had for years competed for awards, official positions, and artistic commissions, David emerged as the leading figure of the neoclassical school, and his style dominated history painting throughout the revolutionary and post-revolutionary periods in France. Peyron withdrew from public life after the decisive salon, but attempted a Socrates painting once more, incorporating lessons from David's work while remaining committed to traditional means of chiaroscuro and color to convey atmosphere and mood. Carefully composed, his 1788 painting displays a brilliant sense of balance. The pictorial construction makes the story's basic elements visible. Imprisoned, holding the cup from which he has already drunk the poisonous hemlock, Socrates admonishes his grieving friends. Peyron's classical education is especially pronounced in the central figure, whose features he modeled on an ancient portrait bust. It is Peyron's distinctive style that provides the scene's emotional tenor, offering an alternative version of heroic neoclassicism. Thank you for joining me, and thank you for your support of Jaws and Art Museum. I look forward to seeing you in the galleries in the future.